So we have 14 constitutional amendments on the ballot. That's a lot of reading. So if people um, want to see what those amendments are before they come into the polling place, we have the sample ballots on our website, as well as the full text of the amendments and the state's explanation of those amendments. Uh, so it's always a good idea to look at those amendments before you come in, because they are, reading 14 of them in a polling place can be uh, very time consuming. Uh, voters also need to remember to bring their photo ID. There are seven acceptable forms of photo ID in Texas. The list is on our website. The most common is the Texas driver's license. Okay. And what times can people come in? All right, we have five early voting locations starting this, uh, this coming Monday, October 23rd at 8 a.m. Um, the polls the first week of early voting are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, we're open from um, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. <laughs> I have to remember that one. Sunday, the hub is going to be open, not any of the other early voting locations, but the hub will be open from 12 to 4. And then the second week of early voting, we're going to be open, uh, that's October the 30th, Monday through Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then the Thursday and Friday of the last week of early voting from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The entire list of locations, dates, and times are also on our website. Okay. And why do we have early voting? Early voting, um, there is a lot of people in, there are a lot of people in Texas that are registered to vote, uh, a lot of people in Smith County. You, having early voting lets people, uh, they don't have to stand in line all day long to be able to cast their vote on that one day. So early voting spreads out the crowd a little bit. Uh, it allows people who might be out of town or might be working on election day to still be able to cast their vote. Um, so it's really helpful to be able to come out and vote early. Okay. And when did people need to be registered by to vote in this election? For this election, if you were registered by October 10th, of this year or before you're eligible to vote in the November 7th election. Um, if you are registered in another county and just recently moved to Smith County and you haven't changed your registration, you're still eligible, eligible to vote during early voting here at the hub only. So that, that's only during early voting and it's only here at the hub. Um, so if somebody's registered, say, in Henderson County, but they just recently moved to Smith County, they need to come to my polling place, my office, during early voting and ask for a limited ballot. Okay. And what kind of a turnout are you expecting? Pretty low. <laughs> Constitutional amendment elections are always a fairly low turnout. Um, we're hoping, we're really hoping we get maybe 10,000 voters, but I'll, I'll really be surprised if we do. Okay, do you know why that is? People don't think it's important or they don't realize it's happening, um, which of course it is important because it's actually changing the Texas Constitution, um, but uh, a large part of it is that there aren't candidates on the ballot, so there's not as much media out there. Um, the signs aren't in people's yards saying vote for so-and-so candidate. So people don't necessarily realize it's actually going on. Okay. And what would you say to get the word out? Uh, I would say that the constitutional amendments actually affect a lot. There are 14 amendments on the ballot for this election alone. Um, several of them have to do with how the state spends funding. Uh, there are a lot of uh, specific funds that they are trying to um, send money to, divvy money up to. So, you know, if somebody is interested in making sure that the funding goes to those projects or doesn't go to those projects, they need to come out and vote for that. Um, a lot of it is infrastructure based. So looking at those amendments is, is very important. Uh, there's one for retired teachers. Um, there's one that has to do with property taxes. So there are a lot of amendments that would affect uh, how the voters' funds are spent. Uh, and we need to make sure that the voters know that, that that's happening so that they can have a say in how, the, how their money is being spent. Okay, and kind of switching gears a little bit, can you tell me what we were watching earlier with the big truck and all the machines moving and everything? Yeah, of course. So the Friday before early voting, 
um, we deliver the equipment to the early voting locations. So what was happening earlier was the, the delivery company, Tyler Moving and Storage for this, for this election, um, came and picked up the equipment and with one of my staff are delivering it to the other four early voting locations. We also have the same thing going on the Monday before election day. We'll have three separate trucks uh, with red carpet moving, delivering those to all of the election day polling places. Okay, and what is in our, what is all the equipment that goes into voting? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we have the actual poll books and the ballot box, the tabulating machine that is at every polling place. We have what we call a ballot marking device. That's where the, the voter puts their ballot and actually marks the ballot and then prints it. It's a giant pencil or printer. Um, so those are the three pieces that uh, are the normal run-of-the-mill pieces of equipment, but you also have the other supplies. You have extension cords, you have um, the notices that we put on the walls, you have the fact flags that we put up, um, you have all of the paperwork that the workers have to make sure that they keep up with and fill out. Uh, so there are a lot, there's a lot to go into uh, that goes into the supplies for a single polling place. Okay. And how many poll workers do you have for this election? Uh, we have a minimum of three per every for every location, uh, and we have 35 locations. So you can do the math on that. I can't. <laughs> and is it too late to volunteer to be a poll worker for this election? For this election, yes, uh, because we already have had training for the election. We've already made sure our poll workers know what they're doing. Uh, for the primary election, we're going to need all hands on deck. So if you're interested in being a poll worker, either work, reach out directly to your party chair, um, at, or you can come into my office or email my office. Uh, we have a poll worker application, and they, you can fill that out, submit it to us, and we'll keep it on record and reach out when it's time to start training for the primary. All right. I think that's all I got, unless you do you want to add anything? The White House, uh, what about the school and city elections? I literally oh. just, I discovered that last night. Yes. Okay, so there are a few uh, political subdivisions that are having an election in conjunction with the constitutional amendment. Um, Lindale ISD is having a tax reduction election, White House ISD is having a tax reduction election, and the city of White House is having a tax reallocation election. Uh, and then the city of Overton is having their general ballot, um, their general election for their city council. So we do have some other items on the ballot, so if you're in one of those jurisdictions, that will show up on your ballot as well. Okay, so people should be looking out for so, additional stuff, but that would be something they could probably just find on their city's website? They should be able to find it on the city or school website, but we also have that if they if they look on our website at the sample ballots, it will actually say if it is for, um, if they're in Lindale ISD, it says Lindale ISD, so that they know to click on that one and that will be their sample ballot. Perfect, and that'll have all the amendments on it. Correct. The additional web yes. specials are specific to. Yes, each of those um, jurisdictions uh, that's having the special election, White House ISD, City of White House, and Lindale ISD have a single proposition. The City of Overton has, I believe it's four races, only one of them is actually a contested race.